love the passion and the excitement um, of not just one, but our church to reach people. Amen. Hey, well, this morning is a special Pastor Nate, if you didn't know. I'm glad to have you here. Um, I love the mission of our church together, reaching beyond the four walls to know him and make him known. Um, but today's a special day, not just because it is my oldest child's 16th birthday, but, but uh, <clears throat> I was going to introduce uh, what is my, my wife's mom or uh, my spiritual mother-in-law, uh, no, my spiritual mother, my mother-in-law. Um, but here's what I, I, I was going to just introduce her with just a kind of a, you know, uh, they've pastored here and all these kind of things, but really what I felt come to my heart this morning was, and I felt even just the atmosphere like this, I, I don't know how to explain it other than this, we sang a song about took me a long time to believe that God would use me, that was me, uh, a long time, uh, actually denial when even somebody would say that God wants to use you, I remember telling her no, it couldn't be me, and she stuck with me. know the story, Evan and myself, we started liking each other in 6th and 7th grade, and they let us be great friends all the way through high school, never go alone anywhere, just come to be great friends. <laughs> I was a good boy, but I was a bad boy. But no, seriously, um, what I what I saw, or what I, what I heard this morning, was we used to sit, I was hungry, I wanted to, I wanted to believe it, but I didn't, it was, sometimes it was hard to believe that God wouldn't want to use me or that God would want to do what he, what you see in his word. And, and sometimes you got to be convinced, right? And, and you could call it this way, faith has to come. And faith comes when you hear it and you hear it again and you hear it again. And she was so good at that, that you know, right now they're over in England uh, doing, they've started a church and, and planning Bible schools. And so really more like uh, sent ones, like you would call that apostles. But the gift of teaching is definitely in that. And when I say again and again, this is what the, the whole picture that I saw this morning is we used to sit, I'd come home and, and we would end up talking about the Lord and I would have so many questions and we'd have what we call God talks. And I'd sit in this little Mazda 626 Passion for the Road car, this was her car, so she called it, anyway, the full name of the car, she was so excited about this car and she'd whip around in this thing, anyway, I mean I'm holding on white knuckles and I'm a teenager. A little blonde, anyway, and it's um anyway. But we would pull into the, and we'd sit there, and sometimes it would be an hour still in that car, talking about the things of God, and just reiterating and teaching and imparting the promises and the truth of God's word, to where it impacted and it changed my life, and that's just really what I felt like this morning was just like a time that you're honored to sit in the car in a sense, with somebody that loves you so much that is willing to stand and say what he says about you and bring a truth to God's word that would change your life. And so there's times that impartation, uh, there's opportunity, you know, there's times that um, in seasons when it's not, maybe it's not as conducive of planning, but then there's other times when your hearts are so um, open, so hungry, and you just need the right thing. Anyway, this is Pastor Susan. This is my spiritual mom. You want to come on up? Let's get her. Give her a hand. Thank you. Passion for the road. Let's I love you. This morning. Thank you all so much. I love that guy. Always have, always will. Um, I really appreciate that because I've had so many things stirring in my heart for this morning, and I, um, of everything I've seen and everything that's been stirred in me, um, you would be here a really long time if I tried to give that all, so I'm not going to try and do that. Don't be afraid, um, but be open. Can we pray real quick? Father, we love you this morning. Can you just love on him this morning? Just clear everything else out of your mind. Let's really tune into him. Father, you've gathered us here not because it's just Sunday and because it's church day and this is kind of what we do. You've gathered us as your family, but also as your church to hear from you. Things we have to hear, things we must hear. There are things that we must see, and especially in this critical time, it's a critical time. 
And we need you. We need to hear from you. We need the wisdom and the insight and the direction that comes only from you, only from your word, only through your spirit. And so we're just opening up our hearts to what you want to say and what you want to do in us. Lord, we want you. We want to manifest you. We want to make a difference in this world. We want people to be touched by your presence, by your power, by your glory. We want to see people come to Christ. We want to see a change in this city. We want to see a change in our nation and in nations around the world because you're coming soon and time is short and we have a work to do and we must do it in the power and the strength that you furnish and that you supply. So we open our hearts. We open our eyes. We open our ears to hear what you would have to say. And we honor your presence in this place. We honor this assembly called Beyond Church. We honor what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I had it in my heart to talk to you this morning about something that I feel like is super important in this day and in this hour, and that is this, to pay attention to your heart, to pay attention to your heart. And the reason I feel that this is so important right now is because there's a lot of loudness in the earth right now. There's just a lot of noise. And people are caught up in the noise, people are listening to the noise, and the impact of that in their lives is it's fear, it's uncertainty, it's um, instability, it's um, anxiety, there's just all kinds of stuff that's going on. But for us, those of you that are in Christ, how many of you in here are in Christ? You know that you've been born again. And if, you, if you're here and you haven't, that's okay because you know what? Today's a great day for you to join the family. All right? But for those of us that are in Christ, there is no reason to fear. In fact, this is the hour that we're to shine. You know, the things that we're seeing in the world, Jesus, um, Jesus gave us a glimpse of what's coming. And um, he let us know that in the last days, in the end times, all the stuff that's going on was going to go on. He let us know that. He showed us ahead. But this is what he said. Be of good cheer. You know what? We should be the most joyful, settled, peaceful, um, authoritative people with the answers on the planet. Yeah, that's, right. that's actually who we are. But we're going to have to learn to pay attention to what's actually really important. And that's the thing right now. Man, their culture in the world right now, there's a culture worldwide, and it's to pay attention to all the racket and the noise that's going out there. And as the church, if we're not mindful to pay attention to our hearts, we're going to pay attention to the wrong thing. And then you know what? We're going to be filled with the same thing that's filling the world. We're going to be filled with dread. We're going to be filled with fear. We're going to be unsettled. Um, We're going to be anxious. But God in his word said that actually the whole earth is groaning and waiting for the sons of God, that's the children of God, that's you guys, that's me, to manifest God. The whole world is waiting for us to do our job, to manifest God. Creation is groaning. That's what you're seeing. The earthquakes, the calamities, the tsunamis, the hurricanes, the devastation, the sickness, the disease, the violence, the chaos, the social instability. Everything you're seeing is a response to, um, to it's, it's a response to what's the stimulus that's going on in the world. 
And it's crying out. People are crying out for God to manifest himself. And you know what? He's going to use us to do it. That's the really good news today. So pay attention to your heart. Okay, Proverbs 4, 23. I don't know when I started, but I don't want to go too long because I can go really long. So will you like flag me or, or something? I don't even know when I started. Okay. Proverbs 4, 23. I know they're going to put it up there. Thanks, guys, up there for doing such an awesome job today. Um, so above all, here's what the scripture says. This is like huge priority talk. When God says above all, he's saying make this a priority. Everybody say priority. priority. God is letting you and I know we need to make something a priority. And he's telling us what priority should be. Above all, guard the affections of your heart for they affect All that you are. Pay attention to your heart. Because whatever goes into your heart is going to affect and impact everything, everything, everything you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. You know what God is saying? Keep your heart healthy. Not your blood pumping physical heart, your spirit man. Above all, do what's necessary to keep your heart healthy. For from your heart flows the wellsprings of life. God wants your life to be saturated with his goodness and his presence. But as Christians, if we're not paying attention to our heart, if we're not guarding our heart, if we're not um, making sure that our hearts stay healthy, then the issues of our life, what comes up and out of us, is not going to produce the goodness of God if we don't guard our heart. Guard is an interesting word. Guard lets you and I know something. It lets us know there's something out there that's a threat. We could say it this way. There are hostels out there. The Bible lets us know that. And that means we're to be on our guard. We're to be on our guard and make sure that our innermost being being is kept where it's supposed to be kept. So that innermost being, I know you're taught super well here, but just for like the context of what we're talking about, you know that you're a spirit being. And when we talk about your innermost being, we're talking about the real you. You're a spirit being. You have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body, but the physical body isn't the real you. Your feelings aren't even the real you. Just the thoughts you have or that come to you aren't the real you. The real you is a spirit man. And the Bible lets us know that through our hearts, this is how we connect with God. You know, God so like blows your mind. He's so much bigger than your mind. You can't know him with your mind. He's not knowable through your mind. He's not knowable through your feelings. He's not knowable through emotions. He's only knowable through your heart. And it's through our heart, through our spirits, who we really are in Christ, that we're led by him, that we worship him, that we come to know him. And you know what? That he leads us and guides us in our everyday life. So out of your innermost being, your heart flows life. Or it's supposed to. It's supposed to. So what you, and here's the focus of today, we're talking about paying attention to your heart. What goes into your heart is what's going to flow out of you into your life. Whatever goes into your heart is going to come out. Have you ever heard this? Garbage in, garbage out. Whatever goes into you is going to be what settles in you. It's going to be what grows in you. So here's something that we kind of have to do on an ongoing basis. We need to be honest with ourselves, and we got to evaluate where our lives are. As we assess our lives, we've got to look and go, what, 
what is growing up in my life? What, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What describes my life right now? Am I full of fear? Because if I'm full of fear, then you know what? Fear's been coming in. If I'm full of faith, it's because I've been feeding on faith food. If anxiety is permeating my life, you guys know what I'm talking about when you self kind of assess where you are. It all comes back to your heart. Pay attention to your heart. Pay attention to the welfare of your heart. What's going in? So you might think, okay, what, how, how do we regulate what goes in our heart? Well, God made these little channels that feed into our heart. You know what they are? These right here, your eyes. These right here, your ears are little gateways. Did you know that? Your eyes are little gateways. Whatever you view, whatever you're watching, it's going to go right into your heart. Whatever you're listening to, it's going to go right into your heart. Whatever you're speaking, here's another one right here. Whatever you're speaking is going to impact your heart. Now, this is one of those things may not make a whole lot of sense to the outward man, to your mind, depending on maybe how long you've been a Christian, how much of the word maybe you're acquainted with. But this is what the Bible teaches us. And the Bible says, guard your heart because out of your heart flow the issues of life. In other words, the, it will fill your life with whatever's going in you. Just because you're a Christian, that's not the end of the story. I'm in Christ, so everything that happens to me must be the will of God. No, absolutely not. Because there are, there's a lot of junk that goes on in our lives, and God has nothing to do with it. It's not his will. It's not his plan. And here's what he does. He beckons. Fill up on me. Get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. Guard your heart and fill up on me because whatever goes in you is going to be what produces in your life. So that word guard lets us know we have an enemy. 1 Peter 5, 8 says this, and, and uh, it says, Be careful. Watch out for the attacks from Satan, your great enemy. He prowls around like a hungry, roaring lion looking for some victim to tear apart. You know, Jesus said, um, and I love this about Jesus, we know that Jesus came to reveal the Father to us, and Jesus was so bold. Jesus walked with God, and you know what he said? He said this, Satan has nothing in me. He has nothing to do with me. He has no part in me. As children of God, we've been translated into the kingdom of God but listen to me, we can give Satan room in our lives by what we take in through our eyes and what we take in through our ears. That's how he accesses our lives. And when he comes, and we're talking about guarding our heart, we're talking about paying attention to our heart. And this is not only what you see, what you think, but let's go all the way down to thoughts. Thoughts that come to you. The enemy, man, he's so good at bringing thoughts to you and I that are destructive thoughts. He wants an inroad in your life. And he's seeking people who are making themselves vulnerable. Okay? So again... Be careful. Watch out for attacks from Satan, your great enemy. He prowls around like a hungry, roaring lion looking for some victim to tear apart. You know, he's actually really incessant. He just keeps at it. 
He takes those little pot shots. You know what else he does? He kind of feels out where you're weak. And he can, you know, Satan doesn't know everything, but we give him tons of information with the words of our mouth. You know, things like this. We just let him know right where we are. You know, if one more thing happens, that's it. I'm quitting church. I'm never reading the Bible again. He's like, oh, okay, all I got to do is put a little more pressure on them and they're going to fold. If my spouse does that one more time, oh, okay, well, I'm going to make sure and try and manipulate that and make it happen. So he's actually really wise and he's really cunning. And just like um, if you were in a military operation, you know, your enemy's going to know you. He's going to do his research. He's going to try and find out where you're vulnerable. So he'll come at thoughts. He'll come, or sorry, he'll come with thoughts. Thoughts that challenge who you really are in Christ. So we're talking about paying attention to our heart. We're talking about guarding our heart. We're talking about the importance of putting the right things in our heart because out of our heart is going to flow um, and impact every area of our lives. So here's what we've got to be able to identify. We've got to be able to identify what's the enemy and what's God. And this is where the Bible becomes super handy. You know, I think it's super, super sad that Christians have so devalued Scripture. They've so devalued the Word of God that it's just like a book that we kind of have to pick up and read, you know, because it's what you should do as a Christian. Really? Really? Actually, the Bible says that Scripture is God-breathed, and it's full of the life of God, and it's alive and full of power, and it transforms. And here's what else it does. We're talking about your heart. We're talking about the welfare of your heart. The Word of God actually shows you who you really are. Because Satan wants you to believe you're something that you're not. And if you don't get into the word of God, you know what? It's going to be super hard for you to discern what's a lie and what's truth. Kevin's mom, when she was alive, was a bank teller. And um, and so she worked at a bank, handled money all the time. And um, we were talking to her about it because there was counterfeit money that had come into the bank. And she said, I knew right away because I felt it. It felt different. And we're like, what? You didn't, not even by looking at it, like you felt it? She goes, well, the thing is, when you handle the real thing all the time, you recognize when something's not what it appears to be. Listen, I want to tell you something. Time in God's word is life-saving. It is life-changing. And when you begin, you, for yourself, begin to handle the word of God, and you become acquainted with the word of God, and God begins to show you who you are in Christ, it is so vital so that when lies of the enemy come, you know it's a lie and it's not truth and you reject it. And I was thinking about what Pastor Nate shared today. And in the times that we spent with him getting the word in him, see, this, this is what he had to settle, but he settled it. <laughs> he had to settle. This is a question we all have to settle. God's word has to become final authority to us. And we have to, at some point in our life, if you're, if you're um, going to effectively guard your heart And you're going to um, ensure the well-being of your spirit, man. You're going to have to believe the Bible 
is truth. It has to be your truth. And when anything comes, a thought comes, something you see is different. It comes with a different ideal. It comes with a different message. When something you hear comes with a different message, you weigh and evaluate it in line with Scripture, and you go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Whoa, wait. That's not what God says about me. So you know what? Reject And here's what rejecting thoughts look like. Speaking it out. That's a lie. Let me tell you something. When the devil comes with lies, you need to speak up. And you need to say to him, that is a lie. This is what the Bible says about me. There's something about just exposing it for what it is that's so powerful. Don't let those areas be weak spots where you begin to take them and consider, oh, did God really, is that what he really meant? When you begin to settle God's word in your heart, God's word is truth to me. Then when lies come, it's like, uh, no, not today, not tomorrow, no. Here's what else it looks like. Reject. Here's what rejection looks like. Something's on the TV. And it begins to send a contrary message. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not what scripture says. Reject. You know what that looks like? Turn it off. Something on the radio you're listening to. Some song that's being sung. Yeah, Oh, man, I love that. I love that. I love how it sounds. Wait a minute. What did they just say? Turn it off. Here's what you need to see. Words, ideas, things that are coming to you and me, they're seed. It's seed. Everybody say seed. Everybody knows that if you plant a corn seed, you're going to produce what? Corn. If you feed on, if you allow seed to come into your heart, this is why the Bible says guard your heart. The Bible says, let's let's look at Mark 4. Let's look at Mark 4. I got to find it. Mark 4, 14 through 20. Jesus gave a parable. Um, He was teaching and he taught a lot in parables. And then he would go back and very often explain what the parable meant to his disciples. And so I'm really glad that Jesus gave us insight into what in the world is going on in our lives. Because he did. And he talks about seed being sown. In this parable, the description of it, I'm going to read to you, the ground that's being sown into is your human heart, your innermost being. You know, the one thing that we're supposed to guard and ensure the welfare of? That heart. Jesus is saying things that come, come in seed form. Remember how Jesus said, Satan doesn't have anything in me? Because you know what? When Remember when Jesus was tempted and Satan would say to him, here's a weed seed. Well, if you're the son of God, Jesus is like, whoa, hold up. No ifs about it. I know who I am. Guys, you got to know who you are. Okay? They're seeds. If you want to see a crop in you produce that's peace, you want those issues flowing into your life that's healing, that's peace, that's joy, that's victory, that's boldness to witness Christ, you're going to have to plant the right seed in your heart. Okay? It's not going to come from listening to all the stuff that's going on in the world out there. It's the wrong kind of seed. I'm going to say it again. It's the wrong kind of seed. You want to know a major place where seed is being sown in a multiplied, accelerated fashion? Because I've been around a while, so I, I can say that. Social media. How many of you are on social media every day? Just be honest. No judgment. 
How many of you are on social media multiple times a day? How many of you guys get the little thing that says how much screen time you've been on your phone? Is it ridiculous or what? <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Seed is being sown through social media and you maybe don't even realize it. Seed on what you're to believe, it's projecting what truth is and if you don't know what scripture says, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna believe it. When you accept something and believe something, that's when it becomes planted in you. And if you continue to listen, and you continue to listen and take that in, you know what it's doing? It's watering and feeding that seed so that that seed grows up and it produces fruit in your life. So you know what kind of, you know what kind of fruit we're seeing produced in the world around us today? There's an increase in social unrest Hatred, violence, racism. You know why? Because of seed. It's seed that's being sown. And we're going to have to counteract that by making sure that we're receiving the truth of God's word, but that we're also sowing the word. Okay? So the sower sows the word. These are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes the word, um, takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And I want you to know something, and we're seeing this more and more, Satan does not want people to know the truth. He doesn't want light to reach them. Because if he can keep them in darkness, if he can keep you in darkness so that you don't know who you are in Christ, and you know what? He can control you. He can control your life. He can control the issues that are flowing into your life. And he's not just about influence. He is about control. Let's just make that clear. He's about total control. The Bible says, you shall know the truth, and what? The truth shall make you free. Truth actually makes you free. When truth comes in and it grows up in your heart, you know what it produces? Freedom. Freedom. It produces freedom from the God of this world. It produces freedom from sickness and disease, freedom from a bad self-image, freedom from fear, freedom from lies. It empowers you to be who God's called you to be. And you know what else it does? It sets you free from being a victim. Oh, my lands. The culture of the world right now is victim. I'm just saying it. God has called you and I victors in Christ. But a victim mentality is um, a mentality that um, it, it's like this. Because of what I've experienced, because of what others have done, because of whatever, I am who I am. And a victim is easy to control and manipulate. But the Bible says that we've been made victors in Christ. You know what? Victors think different. Victors think this way. That may have been done. And I am not negating the fact that horrible things happen to people in the world in which we live because they do. But I do want you to remember what Scripture says. That he lifted me out of the miry clay. When I was in a pit, he lifted me on high. Only God can do that for us. He changes and turns victims into victors. The defeated into champions. The losers into winners. The captives into those who have been set free. That's what God's word does in you. So it says, they hear Satan comes immediately and takes the word that was sown in their heart. And here's how he does it. By pressure, adverse things that come and challenge it, by thoughts that come. Did God really say that? Did he really mean that? Is that really true? You're going to have to make a decision what you're going to believe. Likewise, the ones who are sown on stony ground, they hear the word and they receive it with gladness, but they don't have any root. 
and so they endure for only a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word's sake, immediately they stumble. These are the ones sown among thorns, the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world. Haven't we seen a lot of that lately? And the deceitfulness of riches. Riches aren't everything. Riches are a tool for us. And the desires for other things. Other things than what? Desires for things other than the word. They choke out the word and it becomes unfruitful. Just because you've heard the word once or twice and you know some things about the Bible doesn't ensure that that word is going to grow up and produce in you. It all comes down to this, whether or not you keep it. Whether or not you keep it, whether or not you water it, whether or not you live in a way that ensures the seed that's on the inside of you grows up and produces a harvest. And that comes by guarding your heart and ensuring the welfare of your heart. Okay, listening to the right things. But these are the ones sown on good ground. What is that? Well, it's ground that welcomes the word that receives the word, that where the word gets planted deeply in you. Um, you want the word to get rooted deeply in you so that no matter what challenges come in life, here's your stand. No. No. I know the truth, and I know it's a lie, and I will not fall for the lie. You're going to have to get really dogmatic about it. Brother Hagen used to say, not pupmatic, but dogmatic. Okay? Um, hear the word, they accept it. They accept it. You're not rejecting it. Is that really true? Did God really mean that? Yeah, he really meant that. And here's the difference. We begin to say, you know what, God? I am who you say I am. I have what you say I have. I can do what you say I can do. I'm not a victim. I'm an overcomer. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Guarding your heart. The Bible says that God's word, Psalm 119, 105, God's word is a lamp to our feet and it's a light to our path. If we're not valuing the word, if we're not in the word of God, reading it, studying it, and coming to church, man, that's a great thing. You need to be doing that. But if that's the only thing you're doing, it's not enough light. I'll just tell you right now. It's not enough light. And here's the deal. You take away the word, you're walking through life now with no light because the Bible says God's word is a lamp to my feet. Praise God for that. Have you been out in the woods when it's super dark, no moon, and you've got your flashlight, you sh shine it, you know, around your feet? That's really great. But there, you could be coming up on the edge like this and not even know it's there till it's too late. God's word is not only a light, a lamp to your feet, it is a light to your path. God will show you what's coming. He'll put you in the know. His word will give you wisdom and prepare you for whatever's coming. And there are things coming that we need to be prepared for. And we need to arise and be the church that God has called us to be. So I'll leave you with this this morning. Man, God loves you. God is for you. God's got a plan for you, and he wants to manifest himself. I love that song, uh, <clears throat> you know, about, like, uh, I, don't even, I, I don't know. It was a new song to me. You know, whatever the words of the last song were about stories. What was that? Rescue stories. Rescue stories. Yeah, that was it. That was so cool. Miracles. Can I just throw something out there to you? If you're expecting miracles just to fall on you, and God just all of a sudden oh, just take you and use you. It's not really going to happen that way. 
It's going to be the evidence of the word of God getting in you and growing up in you and then being um, loosed through you. The Bible says, out of your belly, your innermost man, your spirit, shall flow rivers of living water. That's God's will for you. That's God's will for me. But it's going to take you guys guarding your heart, getting the word of God in you, and letting that word grow up. Can you stand? And if you have your Bibles with you, or maybe you're, I don't know, reading your Bible on a device, let's hold up our Bibles. Can we do that? The Bible isn't a thing. The Bible isn't an ordinary book. This is the word of the living God. This is something we, y'all, they're burning Bibles in places in this country. That's not okay. We value the word of God. The word is life to us. What a treasure. Take the word of God and just hold it to you. Father, we love your word this morning. We're grateful that you have given us your word. There are people in places around the world that die to get a page from the Bible, a book from the Bible, something with your word in it. And Lord, we've got your word right here. It's so accessible. We're just writing some things in our lives and we're making your word a priority today. We declare as your people, your word is precious to us. It is life to us. It is light to us. The Bible says it is health to all our flesh. It transforms our minds and changes our lives. It is the truth that makes us free so that we're no longer Satan's victims, but we can live and walk as children of God in authority, in power, in dominion. We can rule and reign in this life because of what Jesus did and because of the power of your word. We make your word a priority. We make your word a priority. We make it first place. And we're asking you to flood the eyes of our heart with light. Father, so that we can understand who we are, who you are, what you've given us in Christ, and everything that we can do through Christ. We also want to be filled with light to discern the season and the times in which we're living and to make the very most of the time that you've given us that we would steward it well to take Jesus to those who don't know him and to be your voice and your instrument of truth in a very dark world. I pray for this congregation today. I apply the blood over them And Father, the plan of God that you have called them to, I know, I know a city set on a hill. A long time ago, you showed us that light, 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 light. So Lord, there's increase that's needed, and I know there's increase that's coming. And in Mokoshkanda Ebreshkidi Ibrokoto, And so, Father, I thank you for what they carry. I thank you for the assignments that you've given to them. And emetoshkondo opro. Pastors, can you come here so I can just put my hands on you real quick. Enepaturo bogodoro brashkiri idi iskanda. And I remember that. Even before we left, um, there was like a word, Nate. There was wisdom. Remember? Wisdom beyond your years. 
And so there's a grace upon you for this time and this hour. And it's for here, but it's also for there. A multiplying and an expanding of all into all that God wants you to do. And he'll fill you with the wisdom and the strategies and the insight and the knowledge and understanding of how to do everything that he's called you to do. And you know, this I know, you will do it. You'll do it in the power of the Spirit and in the might of God and the strength of God. And I see increased boldness and in a kushkanda and a fearlessness in delivering what God places in your heart and mouths and hands to deliver and an increase of faith that's needed to walk out everything that God would call you to do. And you'll do it. And you'll do it to the glory of God. And great will be the increase. And great will be the impact. And oh, the cry of your heart will be fulfilled. You know, the deep things that you cry for, the things that you see on the inside, some you haven't even had utterance for yet, but you will. God will give you the words, and the words will be important. Words will need to be released. Some will just be released as you talk together. Yep, and you have already things that you've seen. And, you know, the idabushka and uh, alternative ways to minister the word. And, you know, very, uh, it seems like something they did a long time ago. But no, 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 no. And it is sambro kushkandine igata. But uh, it'll have to be released. Released through prayer. Uh, released through iskambondom brandindi ishka. Through the words of faith that will come up and out of you and it will ignite a fire and God will cause those around you that he's assembled to see what you're seeing. He'll bring your hearts on the same page. Oh, these are great days. These are glorious days. The glory of God in manifestation. The glory of God in manifestation. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Can I have a moment longer just to pray for the youth? Can I just, I don't know who's youth and who's not, but if you consider yourself a youth, then come here. <laughs> I consider myself pretty youthy, even though I'm not, but I hear you laughing. I, I don't really know why you're laughing. Anyways, okay. Y'all come right up here so I don't have to lean too far. Make a straight line. Can you do that? Oh, thank you, Father. So much God wants to do through you. I want you to all to look at me, and I just want to encourage you something. Only believe. All things are possible to him or her that believes. Believe God. Believe him. Make a decision today. You're just going to believe him. You're going to believe you can do what he's called you to do. You are who he says you are. And you have what he says you have. Believe what he says about himself. There's a lot of words out there, you know, God's not good. How can God let stuff like this happen? The enemy is always wanting to assassinate God's character. But you're going to know him in spirit and truth. You're being taught well here. You believe what the Bible says. Only believe. When other thoughts come, did God really say that? Is that really what the Bible says? Only believe. Speak to those things. That's a lie. That's a lie. I only believe. I believe God. Devil, I believe God. 
and just watch what God will do. So I want you to open your heart. Just receive like you're taking in a big breath. Can you do that? Thank you for the anointing. I don't even. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for the impartation and the itasombro. Yep, receive that. That's it. That's it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. A new place. You're going to a new place. You're going to move in a new realm. Oh, it's time, Matthew, to step into everything God has. Believe, 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 only believe. Receive that now. Like you're taking a big, deep breath. There you go. Don't be intimidated by anything others would say. It doesn't matter what they say. Paul said, I don't care what anybody says. All I care about is what God thinks. Receive the anointing. Take it in, take it in, take it in. Let him change you. Let him change you. Just say yes to him. Thank you for the power of God. Thank you for the power of God. Thank you for these precious ones. So mighty through God. So mighty through God. So mighty through God. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Oh, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. Receive, receive, receive. Take it in. Take it in. God loves you. God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He's chosen you. He's chosen you. He's chosen you. Now just lift your hands. And just begin to thank him right where you are. He's changing you. He's rearranging you. He's transforming you. He's preparing you. He's got good things for you. He's got a plan for you. There's a purpose for your life. To manifest his glory. To be a light in the darkness. Thank you, Lord. Just everybody real quick, can we just lift our hands and thank God? Thank you, Lord. Oh, I speak blessing over this church. I speak blessing over every life, every family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We praise you. We praise you. We magnify you. We bless your name. Can you just begin to bless him right where you are? We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. It's you that we adore. We sing to you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We magnify you. Oh, we declare your goodness and your power and your kingdom and your glory and your majesty. Oh, the goodness of our God, the goodness of our God will be seen, will be told, will be in view, will be on display. It's what you want to do, the goodness of our God, the greatness of your plan. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We bless you. We praise you. Learn to worship him out of your hearts. Learn to get in your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless and praise you. Well, you just got to partake a little bit of a Monson 626 God talk. Uh, just impartation. Guard in your heart. And you know, um, I'm going to close with this. You know, she talked out of Mark chapter 4. And you know, sometimes we can classify ourselves in those pictures of your heart, you know, where it talks about some was hard and fell on the wayside and some was uh, real shallow, right, sprung up. And 
and then there was other stuff that was thorns, and then the other one was the good heart. And sometimes the enemy can lie to us about what heart we have. And um, I believe, you know, just as the Bible says, he says that in the last days, you know, the sower and the reaper will walk hand in hand. In other words, that there's going to be a harvest of things quickly. And I, I even look at, you know, that scripture uh, where ta- the Lord says, you know, you say this long to harvest, but I say look up now and the fields are white with harvest. And I believe with all of my heart that God chose each individual here and here. And with when, when before you were ever born, he chose you, but he also deposited things on the inside of you. And there are promises that he desires or there's things that you are to partake of in harvest and it will take good ground. It will take you. And here's the and here's I want to declare this to you this morning. You make this very clear. Your heart can be good ground simply by tending it. Good ground is tended ground. My dad used to tell us this story uh, of picking rocks. He grew up in northern Minnesota on a cattle farm or a dairy farm, but they also grew all their own corn and things like that to feed the cows. And I remember when we built our house, we went up to this rock pile, one of his rock piles. And I'm talking rock pile as big as this room. They would pick rocks. In Minnesota, there would be this, uh, when it would freeze, it would cause the rocks to rise. And so they'd have to do it, you know, periodically. They'd have to pick the rocks out of the ground. It was super rich ground, but the freeze would cause rocks to rise to the surface. But that ground was incredibly good ground, and they could sow in it, and it could do wonderful things if they would tend it. And that's what all this has been about this morning. I believe that you are here this morning because God wants you to tend your heart. Man, if there's those thoughts, if there's those things, all you got to do is tend it, and you tend it with your words by coming into agreement with what God says. Tend your heart this morning because God wants those things that you've seen in your heart. He wants you to be a partaker of it. You to be the one that celebrates as you bring in, as you bring in, as you partake of all the things and the promises and walk in the pictures that God, His Word has placed in your heart. Amen. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes before we go. If you're here this morning and you uh, don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right now would be a great time to give your heart to Him. I just even sense right now just uh, uh, so many people here surrendering to uh, a picture and, and the words that God has spoken to your heart that might have seemed you didn't know how. And so we're just going to pray this morning uh, and give our hearts to Jesus. We're going to tend our hearts. Father, we, 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 so we just say this. Say, Lord, this morning, I give you my heart. I give my heart completely into your hands. I believe that you are who you say you are, that you love me like you say you do, and that you sent Jesus for me today. I receive Jesus, your son, who died on the cross for me. If you are willing to give your son for me, I believe there is nothing that you're not willing to give and to do with me for your glory. I receive the fullness of your plans For me, in this season, in this time, on this earth, to carry your kingdom and to bring about rescue stories, to see your glory, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Well, um, I think, what's today? Yeah, so... We're just Wednesday night church. Uh, we'll see you guys Wednesday night. Uh, if you need healing in your bodies, um, we'd love to pray with you up here. Yeah, we, we'll lay hands on you even in this time. So uh, anyway, God bless you guys. Have a great week. And uh, yeah, see ya.